kingdom of the continuance, the battle for the eternal day. I want you to focus on this word today in the following text so that I can develop this in its greater depths of an eternal day. Our ideas of a day is based on our limited idea and experience of a 24-hour day, 365 days in a year. This matter of an eternal day is expressed by Peter and Paul. It helps us to get some idea from God's eternal viewpoint using natural illustrations to explain a spiritual reality. So, don't take these natural illustrations and make a hard fact of it. Focus in on the eternal fact as Scripture wants us, us to understand with the mind of Christ and our quickened human spirits by the Holy Spirit. Here are some uh, texts to consider. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So first, don't take offense at being called ignorant. <laughs> the carnal mind is truly ignorant, not the mind of our spirits the mind of Christ. Catch what Peter is finding hard to put into words, which is what Scripture reveals about Peter, who found the Apostle Paul's teachings hard to be understood. So Peter is given by God through the mind of Christ in him a natural illustration to bring this out via a comparison of our idea of a day and God's eternal view of a day being like a thousand years, passing in our carnal idea of a day, which to God's eternal viewpoint and experience of a single day in the eternal world would be like to our idea of a thousand years. Our carnal minds find it hard to be understood. Can you imagine an eternal day and what is considered to be the now having no beginning or ending of days? Paul the Apostle touched on this, with many misunderstanding it when he said, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, For he, God, said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in a day of salvation have I scoured thee, came to your help, in other words, old English word. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So a time accepted is really a day of salvation, which is a, as a day of the Lord, not our idea of when we accepted him. Let me explain that. Paul was tempted to get these carnal-minded Christians of, of Corinth to focus on the eternal day. So, ask yourself this question. When was this eternal day and a time accepted? In the course of our natural experience, God found or finds a time accepted. Finding this moment getting your free will, by an act of your, our free will, he then begins to reveal to us the real event of our salvation, which the scripture labors to the mind of Christ and those used to write, us, write to us, labors to get us to understand that our salvation was altered and finished before the foundation of the world in this carnal form mind's idea of all that. I can't tell you how many arguments I get on this fact. They twisted with what Calvin had said or some, uh, some misunderstanding of an inclusionist, another offshoot group that definitely are wrong, but it's not what I'm saying. 
I'm not a Calvinist, nor am I an inclusionist or universalist. All the labels you get, because people have, can't comprehend the fact that your salvation wasn't based on your performance and had nothing to do with you. He alters it, he starts it, and it's he that finishes it. And to the degree that we surrender by an act of our free will on a daily basis, then he begins to work and reveal this. But humanly speaking, we all fight this. It puzzles us. Now, in my video, The Kingdom of the Continuance, external expressions in a temporal world. Now, this one is hard to understand videos. In that video, I'm attempting to express an experience in the eternal realm and how it plays out in this temporal stage. In that realm, the battle was truly fallen one. It was already fallen one. It's done. Complete. Finished. Beyond this idea of the flesh and blood, race, culture, second religious creeds, and pendants of gender, male, female, that battle in the eternal realm is beyond any idea we have ever considered with the carnal mind in human history. It requires the mind of Christ to hear and to see it. Remember, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This is your opinion and ideas from a human carnal mind standpoint. Now, I can hear the question. Where are you getting these strange teachings? <laughs> the only answer I can give is the mind of Christ, said to be in us all. Sure is in my mind. But for the skeptic, here are a few things to consider. We have had it thrown at us. To keep it simple, brother, but them using the following text found in 2 Corinthians 11.3. But I fear, see, that's the trouble. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve to his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. When they take out the word in Christ and put there the simplicity of the gospel. Keep it simple, brothers. You always quote 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Well, that's the simple gospel. Yes, and it's just simplicity. But there's a complexity of all this to which in maturity you'll get into. But when you first believe, you don't know half these things. There's be a warning in the book of the Proverbs the following. In light of this word, simplicity. Proverbs 1, verse 22. How long, you simple ones? Sounds like Peter, right? Very good. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scoffers delight in their scoffing. Fools hate knowledge. Sure, the knowledge of this world, this knowledge of the world is foolishness. He's talking about the wisdom and knowledge of, in the mind of Christ that's hidden there, waiting to be expounded upon, Worked out by the Holy Spirit. Also notice in 2 Corinthians 11.3 that it said that true simplicity is found in Christ. The mind of Christ in a quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit. Now I always have to express it that way because people just don't understand that. It's the mind of Christ in a quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit. It's a whole different mind. So you see this word simplicity carries a deeper meaning beyond our dictionary ideas of keeping it simple. It's like that stupid phrase, kiss, K-I-S-S. -S, keep it simple, stupid. Who's being stupid here? You're being stupid, or as Peter said, ignorant. If you think for one moment that this matter of the gospel is simple, which many use this, this 2 Corinthians 11.3, to defend their being simple. It is simple with the mind of Christ. Yet it isn't in the self-willed religious mind that thinks that keeping things to some simple religious formula according to some particular religious denominational slant is keeping it simple. These individuals simply aren't willing to go on 
to matters deeper than the carnal mind, secular or religious. They are, without knowing it, they are doing exactly what the Satan did to Eve in the garden, questioning God. He says, go on. Lame breath, height, and depth, the love of God transcends human experience. They are, without knowing it, they are doing exactly what the Satan did to Eve in the garden, questioning God, leading her to believe that she could go with her limited mind of the flesh to figure matters out. The corner of mind will never see things. I have not seen this, nor has ear heard it. So before I get too far off the track on this purpose of this video, hear this hard-to-be-understood text found in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5. So also, Christ glorified not himself, and that's how being Jesus, the Son of Man, he made a high priest. He was never, could never have been a priest. At the natural order, Levitical priesthood. But he had, he that said unto him, God, Jesus, said unto Jesus, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Today. That's the eternal day. Not our idea of a day. You see this idea of the word begotten in Acts 13, 33. God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he had raised up Jesus again, as is written in the second Psalm, that thou art my son this day, have I begotten thee. What day was that? Read Psalm 2, 7. I will declare the decree, the eternal decree and the eternal day. The Lord hath said unto me, past tense, thou art my son. This day have I begotten, eternally begotten the son. He didn't create the son of God. The son of God is as eternal as the father and the spirit. Perfect unity and the diversity of the Godhead. Father, Son, Spirit, and one essence. Anything in that essence is God. The eternal decree in the eternal day. The first begotten, the only begotten, Son of God, and we were begotten in Christ. Now understand that. That comes out in my series. The first begotten, also in the mind of Christ. It develops it to greater depths than most want to go. They want to keep it simple. So this single text requires the mind of Christ. You're never going to understand it. Yet carnal minds have written pages, books on it, especially the word begotten. Now I have many views on it as well in my series, The First Begotten. To the mind of Christ in me, it's simple. But to my old carnal mind, it wasn't in its limitations. It isn't. But the limitation of the carnal mind. So simply said, for those who want to be simple-minded, he comes down to two minds. Which mind do you have? The fallen carnal mind comes from your natural father, tracing it back to the fallen mind of Adam. Which one do you want to follow? That mind or the mind of Christ to God by His love and grace and mercy and accomplished through the Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's broken down in my series, the mind of Christ, the first begotten. Jesus is the Son of Man. With that same mind in Him that's in us, that this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus as the Son of Man, was the mind of Christ. He's God's Son, manifesting in the human flesh as the Son of Man. I've gone to great depth to explain that. It's complex. 
But with the mind of Christ in, you can understand this. So simply said, it comes down to two minds. Which one do you want to follow? Sadly, many don't even have a clue of this mind of Christ and it being the mind of their human spirit awakened by the Holy Spirit. Go see my videos on the mind of Christ. Put a skeptic. So here are some of my notes that got this video started. I sit down in the kitchen and get these pocket notes. I call pocket notes. God give me thought. I jot it down. Then he gives me another thought. So I ask, what's that mean? I keep on asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. So as they keep asking, keep receiving. So as they keep seeking, fine. And lo, the door is open. And all of a sudden things become clearer than you've ever been in your whole life. He opens you up to a whole new mind. And guess what? It's near you. It's in you. You don't have to dig them up or pull them down. That mind is in you. And you can get the, all the answers you want. You don't need to be taught of no man. That's my series on the living word manifest the fact that will be taught of the Father. But here's this thought. Here's some notes I done. I'll sit in the kitchen one day. Here's this thought that comes to me. He said, the wicked of today, because when the word today, that's where the word comes from, sort of from today. The wickedness of today is to not know that they are wicked. And why? Are you saying I'm wicked? Oh my God, right. Focus on the word today. And God's the eternal idea of today. It reaches beyond our idea of 24-hour day. This is the living word come to me. Thinking with your carnal mind, and when I'm thinking that this is the mind of Christ, is about as wicked as it gets. Imagine that. It's our playing God. Thinking you, independent from God, could figure these things out with your phone carnal mind. It's called the wisdom of the world, where it will be proven to be foolishness, secular and religious, sadly. You think the religious people would be closer to God. Many are. They have a form of it, but deny its power. Along with this, reflecting on Paul's experience on Mars 7, in the book of Acts. Now, this is, now, what I'm telling you is what the Lord told me to do today. So I got up on the kitchen table and when I pulled up my Bible and looked up Mars Hill in the book of Acts, Paul's experience on Mars Hill. That's what I read. Here's what I read, Acts 17, 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, and he said, You men of Athens, I perceive. How did he perceive? Through his carnal mind? Was he psychic? Could he read minds? No. To the mind of Christ, the Father was telling him, My, my, look at these people. And the Father says to him, to the mind of Christ, and then all things you are too superstitious. So this thing of Mars Hill is the hill of Arius, Ariacobus, a hill in Athens, Greece. Here's a word study on this text. See, after that, I'm saying, I'm, I'm starting to look, man, that got me interested. Here's a word study on this text, which reveals the fears that those that want to keep it simple have and keep them from going into deeper matters. Or as Hebrews chapter 6 reveals, going on to other things. Listen to that text, Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Let's stop going over the same old ground again and again. Always teaching those first lessons about Christ. You see it in the institutional church. I sat there in the ministry one time, and uh, it was interesting. The first year I went there, a year later, he said, Boy, this sounds familiar. You know what he was doing? He would repeat the same sermons that he had given a year before that and kept going over year after year, the same old sermons that were going on. It was time to leave. I left. Let's go on instead to other things and become mature in our understanding as strong Christians ought to be. Sure, we don't need to speak further about the foolishness of trying to be saved by being good, about the necessity of faith in God. You don't need further instruction about 
baptism, spiritual gifts, and the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. The Lord willing will go on now with other things. But you go into many a video, and in a comment area, or a chat room, or a church Sunday school, and you see the same old debates. You go away for 20 years, and you go back to visit them, and they're in the same debates. Forever learning, but never come to any truth of something greater. These other things. We have videos in that, but it was interesting. Now see this word superstitious that Paul accused the Romans that more civil of being. You can talk about the Christians today too. Superstitious. Okay, from the Greek one one seven four. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word. D D O to dread. A Damion sounds like demon. Damion, a deity. Fear of a deity. I'm afraid of being misled by evil spirits, and they accuse you, brother. You better try the spirits whether of God or not. I have. I know the voice of my father. If you can, can't, if you heard the voice of your father and had the same mind of Christ in you, you could hear what he is saying to this vessel. Anybody with the mind of Christ in him would be of the same mind. There would be no arguments, no more debates. Property, religious, superstitious fear. The devil's scarecrow keeping out of God's cornfield. Driven by a confused concept of God. You don't know about God? Ask him. He'll explain himself to you. Producing sincere but very disdirected religion. They mean well. <laughs> Indeed, this is the mark of hedonism. And might I add, it is also the mark of self willed religion as well. Afraid of going beyond that which is written. See my video on the living word. Like I said, they sing about in church, don't even know what they're singing. They're singing heresy to their interpretation. Beyond the sacred page, we seek thee, Lord, our spirits pant for you, O living word. Beyond the sacred page? Boy, you better tear that song out. It's called Break Down the Bread of Life. They used to sing it during a communion. I know they did in the Baptist church I attended 40 years ago. Better tear that song out of the hymn book. And you know, any more depth than it? Go see my videos on the living word. Those fearful are always afraid of going on out of fear of going beyond that which is written, yet not knowing that it is written, that you should go on. So I hear this word in the Greek, sincere. 1308. It means through, intensifying, intensifying, carry, property, take all the way through. He had begun to work and he will finish it, but you don't allow him to finish it. So take it all the way through to the end. Figuratively speaking, to distinguish fully to show what is better, superior. Remember, the good one is always safe for last. In translation, I am different, differ, and sometimes surpass, excel. Paul said that he had run them all. Doing his research on his words, sincere in Scripture, you discover we are commanded to be different, to surpass the second religious mind and to gain a new mind, the mind of Christ in a quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit. And see my videos on the mind of Christ and you understand what I'm talking about. Or ask the mind of Christ in you, then wait till your quickened human spirit, stirred by the Holy Spirit, to get a word from your Father. 
Let him teach you. You don't have to accept my words. Because he ain't mine. <laughs> don't argue with me. Don't argue with him. And yet doing this, and what I have been sharing here on YouTube, you get labeled for being different. Well, you're different. But some call it strange teachings. See my videos. What does this vain battle have to say? It's based on that chapter in the book of Acts of Paul, Morris Hill. Yes, it is strange to the shallow mind, shallow, carnal, unreflecting mind. To the mind of Christ, it is strange to most. Here it is said of Paul and his teachings, Acts 17, what I just quote, Ariochus of Morris Hill. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this vain babbler say? Others said, he seemed to be setting forth of strange gods because he preached to them Jesus in the resurrection. Well, the preaching teaching of Jesus and the resurrection today to these uh, Epicurean Stokes wouldn't sound strange to them because it's what they're teaching. And they took him and brought him to Ariochus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine, whereof thou speakest, is? What is it? For you bring certain strange things to our ears. We know, we would know, therefore, what these things mean. They didn't want to know any more than man and moon. Why? For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time and doing nothing else but to, to tell would hear some new thing called the New Age today. There's nothing new about the New Age. I had videos on that in the past. Nothing new about it. There's an old hashing of old stupid satanic tricks to distract us from God and the living word and the mind of Christ that's in you. Well, see, my notes stopped there. So I'm asking, Father, you got any more on this? Wait. There will be more of this matter on the eternal day. Beyond our carnal minds and limitations of our day. But I wonder. I already know for certainty that the carnal mind can't hear this. And I have no doubt that the mind of Christ is in you, is in you. The Word of God clearly says it. With those objecting to that fact, it's there. It was given to you as a gift. And if you would wait till you're quickened in your human spirit by the Holy Spirit, you'll hear from the mind of Christ in you, and you'll hear from God your Father. God bless you.